scientists in the US have identified the first ever case of a crocodile who made herself pregnant. Ese cocodrilo is dancing the crocodile rock. Yeah. <laughs> All by herself. According to reports, she'd been kept apart from other crocs but gave birth to a fetus which was 99.9% .9 genetically identical to her. An almost exact genetic match and no mate. It's pretty incredible. And it has scientists pretty revved up right now. So how did it happen? And what can it tell us about dinosaurs? This was present in an ancestor for all of these animals. And that means that it probably occurred in dinosaurs and pterosaurs as well. Before we dive into that, um, we need to first meet Coquita. She's a, an 18-year-old American crocodile living at a zoo in Costa Rica. And one day in January 2018, zookeepers found her curled up next to 14 eggs. Now, it's not that uncommon for reptiles without mates to lay eggs. You know, it's kind of like how chickens do. They, they don't need roosters to lay the kind of eggs that we buy at the grocery store. They just lay them unfertilized. But here's why Coquita piqued the interest of scientists. You see, she'd been alone for years, so long that everyone assumed those eggs were unviable, just like the ones we eat. But when zoo caretakers did a test, you know, like literally holding the eggs up to a flashlight, seven of them looked like they might develop. They incubated them, and sure enough... One of these eggs actually developed into a fully uh, formed embryo that was stillborn. Now, the thing here that's crazy is this female crocodile had been in isolation, uh, and by isolation, I mean not with another male, um, for the previous 16 years. Now, this is going to sound crazy, but Costa Rican officials believe this was a virgin birth, parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is where the egg of the female uh, ends up fusing with another product that is formed during egg development that also has chromosomes. Um, and it kind of tricks the egg into thinking that it's been fertilized. And if that sounds familiar... John, the kind of control you're attempting is... Uh... It's not possible. Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Uh... Oh, there it is. There it is. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Now, as we heard, the baby was stillborn, so life only almost found a way. And, and there is another significant difference between what happened to Coquita's egg and what was going on in Jurassic Park. In Jurassic Park, the way that life finds a way is them actually splicing frog DNA into the genome of, of you know, a lizard or something in order to create a, uh, an embryo. Um, we've basically shown with this discovery that that wasn't necessary, that life could have found a way on its own, that dinosaurs likely could have been capable of producing offspring in the absence of a male without any human intervention at all. Okay, so not quite the same process, and we're not going to see a virgin birthed baby crocodile live its life. But still, it was big enough for Costa Rican officials to reach out to experts in the U.S. for help. My co-authors and I discovered facultative parthenogenesis in a New World crocodile, um, which was very exciting. Now, I know what you're thinking. Maybe there was a male involved. Like, you know, like somehow, somewhere, there, there just was, and, and we just don't know about it. Well, they thought of that. And if that was the case, there had been some genetic material from an unknown father. But the match, apparently, between mother and embryo was pretty exact. Reptiles have a uh, capacity to do long-term sperm storage. So we thought that that might be a possibility as well. So to rule that out, uh, we got DNA from both this mother crocodile and from the stillborn embryo. Um, and then I wrote a computer program called Parthenogenius that scans through uh, both the genome of the mom and the genome of the baby. And there was no dad. This was definitely an animal that was the product of virgin birth or faculty of parthenogenesis. 
As much as we humans tend to think of virgin births as the realm of the supernatural, we've seen this before in the animal kingdom, in you know, birds, sharks, lizards, snakes. It's just never been documented in crocodiles until now. And to see parthenogenesis not just in modern birds, but, but in old reptiles too. Like, you know, uh, crocodiles predate dinosaurs. And it kind of makes people wonder if dinosaurs might have had this trait too, since crocodiles and dinosaurs share a common ancestor. This is something that did not evolve in birds. This was present in an ancestor for all of these animals. And that means that it probably occurred in dinosaurs and pterosaurs as well. You know what this is? It's a dinosaur egg. The dinosaurs are breeding. But one last question. Why does this happen? Like, from an evolution standpoint, is it just random or, or is there a reason? Like, life finding a way in the absence of males or, or maybe just a last-ditch survival strategy for a species that's on the brink of extinction? This is a great example of the ultimate parachute for survival. So we don't know for sure yet, but as with any great story, the questions are just as fascinating as the answers. That does it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.